Rolling Stone. Good morning, everyone. How are you doing? It's Paul here from Unusual Things. Now, this morning, I am in Cheltenham Cemetery and Crematorium, and we've come to find the final resting place of Brian Jones. Um, <clears throat> talented musician. I'll tell you a bit more about his life real soon. Um, but, of course, the founding member of the Rolling Stones. Now, without Brian, I doubt there would be a Rolling Stones. So, um, you know, what a legacy to leave behind. I don't know about you guys, but I've rocked out loads of times for the Rolling Stones, ain't it? Brilliant. Um, so this one's a, a special one today uh, because of, you know, what he started, really. Um, I'll tell you a little bit more about him real soon. Don't forget, of course, if you do like the video today, please leave it, give it a thumbs up. It's a bit chilly this morning. And um, leave me your comments down below. Um, you know, are you a Rolling Stones fan? Are you more of a Beatles fan? Or what, where were you? Where's your music loyalties lie? Because that was always the thing back in their day, wasn't it? Um, in the 90s, we had the Blur Oasis thing, which wasn't as big, I don't think. But, um, you know, and then back in their day, they had the Stones and, of course, the Beatles. So, uh, But we come here today to find Brian Jones's. Um, this is a massive cemetery. Um, and I've got no real clue, <laughs> nothing, no. I've seen a picture of the grave and that's it. I've got no real landmark to guide me on. So this is gonna be a big walk today, but obviously I'll keep it short and sweet so you don't have to see all of that. Otherwise you'll probably switch off after two minutes, won't you? Uh, I just gotta say, uh, welcome to any new viewers. If you're new to the channel, uh, please go back and watch some of the old videos because there's loads on there now. I think I've got about 155, 156 now. Um, and I'm always constantly being asked, can you go here? Can you go there? And I've always already done it. So feel free to go back and have a look through the back catalogue of stuff that I've done as well. And if you're a regular viewer, how are you doing? Hope you're well. Um, thank you for supporting and watching as always. And of course, thank you to all the members and people that do donate towards the channel. Always eternally grateful. As you know, there's a lot of cars around here. It's quite an active cemetery. Anyway, let's get on and I'll tell you a little bit about Brian Jones, shall we? Brian Lewis Hopkins Jones, 28th of February, 1942 to the 3rd of July, 1969, was an English multi-instrumentalist and singer, best known as the founder, rhythm lead guitarist and original leader of the Rolling Stones. Initially a guitarist, he went on to provide backing vocals and played a wide variety of instruments on the Rolling Stones recordings and in concerts. Brian Lewis Hopkins Jones was born in the Park Nursing Home in Cheltenham, Gloucestershire, on Saturday the 28th of February 1942. An attack of croup at the age of four left Jones with asthma that lasted for the rest of his life. His middle class parents, Lewis Blount Jones and Louisa Beatrice Jones, nee Simmons, were of Welsh descent. Brian had two sisters, Pamela, who was born on the 3rd of October 1944, same birthday as my dad, and died on the 14th of October 1945 of leukaemia, and Barbara, born on the 22nd of August 1946. Jones left Cheltenham and moved to London, where he became friends with fellow musicians Alexis Corner, future Manfred Mann singer, Paul Jones, future Cream bassist, Jack Bruce, and others who made up the small London rhythm and blues and jazz scene. He became a blues musician, for a brief time calling himself Almo Lewis and playing the guitar. He also started a group of, with Paul Jones called the Roosters in January 1963. After both Jones and Paul left the group, Eric Clapton took over Brian's position as guitarist. Jones placed an advertisement in the 2nd of May 1962 edition of Jazz News, a Soho club information sheet inviting musicians to audition for a new R&B group at the Bricklayers Arms Pub. Pianist Ian Stewart was the first to respond. Later, singer Mick Jagger also joined the band. Jagger and his childhood friend, Keith Richards, had met Jones when he and Paul were playing Al Moore James. Dust My Broom with Corners Band at the Ealing Jazz Club. Jagger brought guitarist Richards to rehearsals. Richards then joined the band. Jones and Stewart's acceptance of Richards and the Chuck Berry songs he wanted to play coincided with the departure of blues purist guitarist 
Jeff Bradford and singer Brian Knight, who had no tolerance for Chuck Berry. As Richards tells it, Jones came up with the name of the Rolling Stones later with the G while on the phone with a venue owner. The voice of the other end of the line obviously said, what are you called? Panic, the best of Muddy Waters album was lying on the floor and track five side one was Rolling Stone Blues. The Rolling Stones played their first gig on the 12th of July 1962 at the Marquee Club in London with a lineup of Jagger, Richards, Jones, Stewart, bass player Dick Taylor, later of The Pretty Things and the drummer Tony Chapman. From September 1962 to September 1963, Jones, Jagger and Richards shared a flat, referred to by Richards as a beautiful dump, at 102 Edith Grove, Chelsea, with James Fouge, a future photographer, whose name was used in some of the group's early Nanka stroke Fouge writing credits. Jones and Richards spent day after day playing guitar while listening to blues records, notably Jimmy Reed, Muddy Waters, Willie Dixon and Howlin' Wolf. During this time, Jones also taught Jagger how to play the harmonica. The Four Stones went searching for a bassist and drummer, finally setting on Bill Wyman on bass because he had a spare VOX AC30 guitar amplifier and always had cigarettes as well as bass guitar that he had built himself. After playing with Mick Avery, Tony Chapman and Carlo Little in January 1963, they finally persuaded jazz-influenced Charlie Watts to join them. At the time, Watts was considered by fellow musicians to be one of the better drummers in London. He had played, among others, Alexis Corner's group, Blues Incorporated. Watts described Jones's role in the early days. Brian was very instrumental in pushing the band at the beginning. Keith and I would look at him and say he was balmy. It was a crusade to him to get us on stage in a club and to be paid half a crown to be billed as an R&B band. While acting as the band's business manager, Jones received five pound more than the other members, equivalent to 111 pounds in 2021, which did not sit well with the rest of the band and created resentment. Richards has said that both he and Jagger were surprised to learn that Jones considered himself the leader and was receiving the extra five pounds, especially as the other people like Giorgio Gomowski appeared to be doing all the bookings. Jones was a gifted multi-instrumentalist proficient on a wide variety of musical instruments. Prior to his dismissal from the Stones in 1969, Jones typically played all their instruments that varied from the drums, guitars, piano and bass that were standard in rock. His ability to play a wide variety of instruments is most evident on the album's Aftermath 1966, Between the Buttons 1967 and their Satanic Majestics Request 1967. At around midnight on the night of the 2nd to 3rd of July 1969, Jones was discovered motionless at the bottom of his swimming pool at Cotchford Farm. His Swedish girlfriend, Anna Wolin, was convinced he was alive when he was taken out of the pool, insisting he still had a pulse. However, by the time the doctors arrived, it was too late and he was pronounced dead on arrival at the hospital at the age of 27. The coroner's report stated it was drowning, later clarified as death by misadventure, and noted his liver and heart were greatly enlarged by past drug and alcohol abuse. Let's try the magic door handle to see if we get the magic. Oh, I don't think that's the right door. Let's go and have a little look around. So I get this is massive. Look, it's not massive, massive, but it's a lot bigger than what I thought it would be. To the North Chapel. These chapels are no longer in use for funeral services. Please, all oh, right, that's for the new creme. Oh, wow, we're in. In the words of Charlie Beach, not allowed. <laughs> Can't get in there.
That'd be an Odin. <laughs> Why have they locked them off? Why can't they just leave them open? I know it says, no, you know, in no longer use for services. I get that. Um, but at least leave them open so people can have a little nose. All right, guys. As always, we always see something, don't we? Look. Look at this one. That's crazy. Look at it. In memory of Thomas Harper, who died August 27th, 1883, age 58. You know what to do if you want to. Go and have a look. It's just unusual. Unusual things. So there we have all the information there about Brian Jones. What a very talented musician. Imagine if, um, you know, if you'd have stayed alive. What? 27. Again, no age, is it at all? Um, and I read as well afterwards that um, some people started rumours that there was a little bit of foul play in his death and things like that. How true that is, I don't know. And like I say, when I read it, it said it was rumours and alleged. So don't know about that. Look into that if that's something of more interest to you. Uh, but such a waste of a young life. Again, another 27 year old kid, really. That's all they are aren't at that age, but talented. Um, anyway, I think I found it along with the noisy crows. But we like noisy crows. Wow, so many flowers here. In affectionate remembrance of Brian Jones, born 28th of February 1942, died 3rd of July 1969 at Hartfield, Sussex. And of course, people have left the pebble there that says, You matter, Brian Jones. Some pictures there, look. No Jones, no Stones, Facebook fan group. Wow. That's true, though. So true. So there we have the final rest in place of Brian Jones. I've got to say a massive thank you, Brian. Um, without you, your creativity, your insight, your foresight, you know, there would be no stones about. Like that said there on the, the, those flowers, um, no Jones, no stones. Didn't know there was a Facebook group for it, but I love to see all these little mementos. And of course it would have been his birthday, 28th of February. Um, we're you know early stages of March now so um wow thank you Brian bless you bless you um to be taken so young as well it's it's always sad isn't it and um again you know it's another rock star musician uh, someone in the public limelight that who knows what happened um but yeah, Brian Jones, Rolling Stones. It just puts things into perspective a little bit, really. Well, a big bit when you're when you're looking and thinking about these. Um, like I said, they're on kids because that's all they are, kids, twenty-seven. Um, you know, and it's such a shame that their life is taken from them. So there we go. That's it today from Cheltenham. Uh, cemetery and crematorium um, in the beautiful countryside really you know it's, it's really nice here it's, it's gorgeous and like I say that that view up there it's just second to none really and that's what's nice about coming to these places isn't it that we get to see all of this and more importantly I get to bring you guys along with me um, and enjoy the journey yeah so don't forget leave your comments down below are you a massive rolling stones fan um were you a brian jones fan at all um you know he works with some big names he left an amazing legacy and um you know we got to thank him today for what he's done for the music industry and uh like i said earlier on it doesn't it doesn't you know you can't sort of think about what what would he have done? What would he have achieved even more if he'd have still been here? It was a um, sad loss, really, to the music industry. Anyway, that person's enjoying their little run down there. Look. 
good on them. Saturday morning, fresh air, countryside, it's beautiful. Right, I will leave you all now and uh, leave your comments down below. One of them if you like it, and I'll see you all on the next one. Take it easy.